have you ever seen your new teammate Shota Imanaga pitch? Uh, I remember watching him in the WBC last year. I remember thinking, like, just watching the talent uh, Team Japan had, and yeah. I was like, there's no way they have, like, another dude. And then I saw him pitch in the finals. I was like. The fastball's crazy, they right? They just keep bringing dudes out. Yeah, he's got a really good ride fastball, throws a ton of strikes. I know he's known for being pretty durable over there and stuff, so I'm excited. And I just wa- I was actually at home uh, watching his press conference, and it fired me up. Yeah, because he 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 led with he led with awesomeness. Yeah, and, and English and That's hey hey, what do you true say? bravery trying to speak English? You know, his first time over here, knowing uh, you know the W song and all that is pretty cool. You, you know, I thought of you though because he clearly, as free agents do now from anywhere, they interview the teams about what the teams are going to do, and that was a big part of your free agency. You loved what the Cubs plans were for you. Seems like he loves what the Cubs plans are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it starts like the Cubs make these awesome free agent videos. So that starts the free agent process on the right foot. I feel like they get a a jump on other teams by making a real effort to like make these tailored videos to you. What a day in the life at Wrigley would look like. What a day in the life, um, you know, in spring training would look like. They interview potential teammates and pitching coaches and stuff and talk about how they could help you over here and what they kind of have in store for you. So um yeah the cubs were pretty unique in free agency i actually thought um and yeah i I heard they were calling him like a cerebral pitcher and thinker and it makes sense that this is a fit because that's something that really was attracted to me it was like just nerding out and talking pitching with the cubs what was a detail that they had for you that stood out um actually so i sat down with craig breslow who's with the red sox now but he actually came with like this whole binder of like pitch usage stuff, adding a sweeper, which I did. uh, And I felt like I started figuring out at the end of the year, there were some like biomechanic uh, things that he saw um, and they, you know, tailored like custom workouts and stuff to try to attack some of this stuff. So, I mean, it was pretty thorough. Um, They talked about game planning. They talked about their system IV that you can watch video on and all that. So you last year, when you, you had a six start stretch from July 7th to August 8th, where you averaged more than six innings per start, had an ERA of 2.17. And I know it was a bumpy year at times before and after, but right in that, in that patch, what was going so right, and how do you replicate that? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know. I think a lot of it is just confidence. Like, you get one good start, and you build that into the second, it just kind of builds up. Um, when I was struggling, it's not like I felt like I was totally lost out there. It felt like, man, if I could just kind of get on a run and get some traction – um, so that I honestly think some balls were being hit at guys. Um, wow. some things started clicking. Then once you get confidence, like, I feel like that goes all the way into your routine and into your delivery and everything just starts ticking up because you're just approaching things with a little bit more confidence. Wow. We're talking to Jameson Tyone. Craig Council will be here for his first appearance on the show in just a couple of minutes. Is that reassuring or scary <laughs> that you've been doing this your entire life? You had a rocky season. It went well for a while. And you don't know why. Yeah. That would, I, I, for yeah. me, that would kind well, of freak me out. But I could, I could, I guess, I could see both sides of it. Yeah. So I think you know a big part of it too is like we did make some changes. I was just saying that little stretch. I'm not a hundred percent sure what that was, but like okay. as a whole in the second half, I feel like I got closer with the catchers, closer with the pitching coaches. Um, we started figuring out drills that I liked. Everyone was on the same page with how I like my information presented, and that stuff really matters. Um, Like when I was in New York, I got off to a rocky start for a little bit and then kind of got a little better. So at least for me, that stuff matters. Having a relationship with the PTs and strength coaches and being able to like just communicate and collaborate and all that. Um, So I do feel like there's things we went into this offseason we were able to like really genuinely build on. That's cool. So offseason plans, that's what I was going to ask. So what did you learn last year that you took into the offseason and hopefully hit the ground running in the spring with? Yeah, a lot of different drills. Um, you know, I've been long tossing more this year, just trying to, like, get my mechanics into some different positions, throwing my weighted balls, med ball drills, lifting very, very well. Um, so, yeah, it's been a fun off season. I've been traveling a bunch, but I've also found a way to get, like, consistent work everywhere I go, which has been awesome. So I, I saw you at the United Center for big-time college hoops, yeah. ACC and the Big Ten. You were digging it with your fiancé. I was at, digging it. At the time. <laughs> um, have you gone to other sporting events this off season? You like going to stuff. Uh, 
I was just texting with my agent about getting tickets to the Waste Management Golf Tournament in Arizona. <laughs> Hell yeah. So that's next on <laughs> my, my list. My man. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying to go to that right before spring training. I'll already be down there. That's a crazy one, right? We, we had Lance Lynn call in hammered from, right. the, from the 16th or 17th hole. It's the 16th hole. Yeah, the 16th hole last, last year. Yeah, yeah. He, he, would, he called in a couple times. That was great. I got a taste of it last year. It was, it's a pretty cool event. So, yeah, I'll try to go to that. I'm trying to think. I, don't, yeah. I actually don't think I've been to anything else this, this offseason. Mostly been visiting family and doing all that that type of stuff. Going to weddings. Will you throw beers on the on the green if someone gets a hole in one? Uh, absolutely. If I'm drinking a beer, I'm more of a margarita guy. But if I have a beer in my hand, I'll let it rip. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. You you should make a margarita bet with him then, because Danny's known for his margarita bets. I've made one with Joe Kimmel that he made, still hasn't paid up on. Yeah, it. Joe, Joe hasn't paid up, but I bet you know Jameson you could track down. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I probably could find him. Yeah, he probably I'd probably have to give me strokes on the golf course though. Oh. Would would be my guess. I'm not very good. Cool, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try to bring some marks out there with you and play to our handicaps. Um, it, the, the season begins March 28th in Texas. They're pretty good, I, I, yeah. I think, yeah. So I assume Justin Steele gets the opening day start. You know, it's a I hell of a year. So. I, I Ideally, you go what? Lefty, righty, lefty, because you go back to Imanaga at three. Is Jamison Tyone in that two spot? What, what, what matters to you? What, what, what would you like to see happen? Um, that stuff's always tricky because it just comes down to, like, when you get to spring training, obviously you line up your opening day guy, and Steely has very much earned that right. But um, I feel like a lot of it just comes down to, like, where you're at routine-wise, where your bullpen days fall. Like, I'm sure they'll optimize it at some point, but if you're not the opening day guy, I feel like it doesn't matter as much because throughout the course of, of the year, like, some guys will get skipped, some guys will get pushed, some guys will get moved up. Like, that – we as players don't really read too much into that. Yeah. What – I know team goals, win a division, win a World Series, all that stuff. Individually, are you a, I'm willing to verbalize my goals because obviously Cubs fans didn't see the best version of yourself from your baseball reference page and all of that last year. Like, what, what should they expect from you this year? Yeah, I try not to set, like, specific numerical goals. That's hard. Baseball is a weird game. But I do try to just – I know it sounds super cheesy, but be in control of things I can control. So showing up, working hard, being in the weight room every single day, being a good teammate – uh, hitting my plyo drills, hitting my recovery, hitting my diet properly, all that type of stuff, taking care of my sleep. Like, I set goals with all of that. Um, but as far as, like, numbers, that's hard. But I do feel like if you take care of everything, then the numbers should show up. Um, so, obviously, you play the game for that reason. You never know what can happen. But um, I'm more of a just take control of the things that I can do on a daily basis to get better and then just let it fall. Deep respect for the uh, mindfulness that you talked about uh, last year and the the meditation and having a practice. Has that continued into your off season? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you learn a lot about yourself when you're struggling. <laughs> and I was searching for stuff last year. Like, I'm not a guy who's just going to sit back and be like, well, you know, I, I'm stinking right now. That is what it is. Like, I'm going to try to proactively find ways to get better. So I, it sounds weird, but I started journaling. I started doing some mindfulness and meditation. Doesn't, um, doesn't sound weird to us. That sounds weird. We're a therapized yeah. show, man. Yeah. And I think that's stuff that carries over into like my everyday life. I've noticed I'm just a much more calm person, more understanding. Um, and I, it turned my year around. Like right when I, I'm not saying it's the only reason, but when I started journaling every day and like actually taking note of what I want to get done every single day, reviewing what I did at the end of the day, like that literally started on July 1st, and I feel like my season kind of turned around from there so there could be something to it oh i i think i think there definitely is i mean i i try to meditate every day and if i don't like sometimes it'll be like a week will go by and i'll be like man i'm, I'm a mess why am i a mess oh yeah it's probably, it's probably that probably that that i forgot to do again i right try there. i try to meditate and then i check twitter <laughs> <laughs> then, just then start just, scrolling yeah it just starts scrolling like, oh my god i just missed something on tiktok yeah. Yeah. it's just as peaceful so craig i mean you heard it in that in that intro the overachiever maximized your talents. That was what the knock uh, or the, the reputation for you as a manager got the most out of your teams. Do you know how you do that? Like, can you explain the secret sauce to getting the most out of whatever you have in front of you? No. Awesome. Yeah. No. No. Right. I, oh. I, I, yeah. I, I mean, I can. I mean, Good I stuff, think. Danny. Well, yeah. no, I mean, I, but I'm it's been doing it for a long time, so it's a lot of dumb luck, though. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you don't explain it. You just, you know, managing is about people. Uh, it's about players, um, and it's about, you know, stacking up good decisions, um, and 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 simple as that. And and that's what my job is about. Um, and I don't make it any more complicated than that. I don't, you know, ascribe anything more to like some talent I have than that. Um, but I, I manage people. I take care of those people. 
um, and, and, try, and, and by doing that, get the most out of them. And then I, my job is to make a lot of good decisions. Um, and they're, they're decisions based on, you know, we have a ton of information in baseball. Numbers, gut, all those things matter, and, and you use all of it to make good decisions. So how do you deal with pressure? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think the, the first thing that comes to mind is, like, pressure is kind of why you do it. It's not, it's not the bad thing about doing it. It's why you're doing it. It's the feeling that you want. Um, you want, you know, we are performers, you know what I mean? And, and that, that means there's pressure around, along with that. Most, most of it's self-imposed, um, but it's the good kind. You know, it's the, good, it's the kind that makes you want to succeed. It's the kind of what makes it, it's the competitiveness in you that makes you want to win. And, um, you know, that, that's how I've always treated pressure. You know, I think any performer has got a love-hate relationship with pressure, right? They, they, they hate it, but they also love it. Yeah, you need it to get you going. That, that's right. Absolutely. A couple of game specifics with you, if you don't mind. Won't hold you to these during the course of the year, I promise, <laughs> really. really. Um, all right, the opener. When I think of the opener, I think of you and Wade Miley grinning at each other after five pitches in 2018. Might we see an opener sometime this year? Yeah, that that was that was um, that was the opener taken to a little bit different level. Yes. Um, they, I think they've made rules that, that have prevented us from doing that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think you you always consider it, um, and and then you know the thing about the opener is you consider it, you talk about it, you talk about it a lot, and uh -huh. then you got to find what's the good in it, and then what's the ramifications from doing it, and you got to consider both sides of it um, when you do it. All right, so that's a maybe. Um, you got a part-time hitter who's hot, three great games in a row against favorable matchups. Tough, tough matchup on day four. Is he playing? Any chance he plays if he's red hot after three days, even though the matchup isn't good on day four? Yeah, you're leaving out a lot of information. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're leaving out a ton of information there. <laughs> Okay. So, so I don't have to answer that because no. you're not giving me all the you're not giving me okay. all the data points there. Man. All right, well, how about this one? First and second, nobody out. You're down two runs. You got a three true outcome guy up, but he's also a pretty good bunter. <laughs> Any chance you ask him to bunt? First and second, nobody out. Down two runs. Uh, I I wouldn't say there's no chance. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think there's players that you, you you know you bunt with players who have are appropriately skilled to like uh -huh. put them in positions to succeed. Um, so the right players like. Bunning, bunning, and the right matchups. Uh, bunning, bunning could be a factor, but um, just to say that the bunt is the best play here, I think that's where we get ourselves in trouble. Okay, and last one. Uh, defined roles in the bullpen. Need a closer. Need somebody who believes they are a closer. And in a related question, how's your relationship with Josh Hader, free agent? <laughs> um, defined roles in the bullpen are are helpful, I think, for the players. I mean, I think anybody kind of wants to know ideally you'd like to know what you're doing when you come to work that day yeah. it's, it's easier for you right um doesn't always work that way i think who your team is um kind of dictates whether you can do that um i think josh is doing great I, I think he's having a great winter um enjoying himself getting ready for a great season okay he's not he's not in somebody's <laughs> hotel room is he he's, he's not okay so when you got introduced you talked about you know you were going to be deliberate and everything like that has it been what you expected it to be so far yeah i mean i think it's um it has it's probably been a little bit more um you know the intimidating part is just getting to learn the number of people and look i've told you managing people you, you know you're managing people and establishing those relationships is a really important part of this job letting them know you um i spent a great we just spent a great 36 hours with coaches you know, like working on a lot of things and just getting letting them hear me talk um is, is a really important like step in that direction um being able to spend some face time with players this weekend really important part of this um so i feel the more i can be with the people i'm going to work with the better i feel um and, and that's what's happening this weekend we had a great conversation with bob brenley uh after you got hired and he brought up one specific moment where you came back to the the dugout after some strategic decision and you said all right you're gonna have to explain that one to me <laughs> and he loved it he loved that you cared that you wanted to have the conversation do you like having those conversations with players you open to it when they come to you now yeah absolutely i think i, I think that's my favorite part of the game you know i think there's we've got decisions to make um and i think players just want to know more than anything like did you put time into that decision and what why did you make it and and I think it, it is my job to be able to explain that, absolutely. Um, 
you know, that's that's important. They're not going to always work. I think that's the, the about, especially about in baseball, they don't always work because we play so many games. Um, but it's important to be able to have logic behind your decisions. Uh, and I, I take that very, you know, that's really critical to any decision I make. So expectations, Theo used to say that now they were a, a victim of their own success because it used to be the lovable losers and all that yeah. sort of thing. And then you have that crazy run. Now you have to live up to them. You get hired in very high profile fashion. There are expectations from all of these people. What would you say to Cubs fans about what they should expect? Yeah, absolutely. I want expectations. Our players want expectations. That's why we're here. Um, so we, we should be held to those expectations. That's that's part of this. Um, that's a great part of this. Uh, and you work hard. You work really hard to get expectations. Um, and you want to be in atmospheres that produce that the pressure of expectations. We want that. And if and if you don't want that, we're in the wrong place. Have you been enjoying Chicago? What have you uh, have you been able to do? Um, this week's been this week's been like I tell you one of my favorite things is it's it sounds weird but like uh, I told the I talked to the, spoke with the Cubs uh, associates this yesterday two days ago and and literally for me still just like walking across the street like parking my car and walking across like a city street and into the ballpark is still just like it, I get chills even in the winter and there's no fans there there's no you know, there's not crazy energy going on, but still just walking across that street into Wrigley Field is, is something that it's been really special every time I've done it still. Were you freaked out at all during the first 60 days of this particular offseason when there was not a whole lot of activity? Because fans were freaking out, man. Like, we dealt with it a lot. Like, you know, panic. Did it ever, did it ever hit you at any point? No, is the, is the short answer. I mean, it, I was talking to Jed about this the other day, and... and neither jed nor i have twitter or instagram or really read much and it's awesome as you guys are don't listen to you guys wow. often wow. Um, I mean, love you like but yeah, just obviously but yeah, yeah. Um, my wife doesn't listen either but i was like i was like you know what it's kind of like like hearing on the periphery you know that concept of of you know hey we're like we're running out of time it's like it feels like you know, when you're a kid and you got 45 minutes till you got to go get in the car for school and you know it's only going to take 15 minutes to get ready and your mom's calling down like you gotta hurry up like let's go and you're like we're, we're, we're it's fine right and that's kind of how we felt like it's fine I, it's fine to be honest if you would have been listening and you should have right i was like eh, it's fine yeah. because I, was like, I don't think that they hire craig council for 40 million bucks and have a team that got good last season to be to to not invest in the team like that just didn't make any sense. Well, sure, and logically. it's also like logically, like if we think a deal is a good deal, wouldn't we do said good deal? It wasn't like we're like that's a great deal, but let's just not do it because we just want to wait three more weeks because right. 2024 just has a much better ring to it. Right. You want to you want to torture people on the internet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not what you're interested. But like, so what I have been trying to work through though is whether Bellinger comes back or not. If he comes back. It's not really an addition because he was here last year and the team wasn't good enough to win big last year with him. So if you lose him, it's like a lot of stuff that you have to add and add to production. And even if you bring him back, you have to add on top of it so you're better than last year. Or am I missing a variable in that analysis as I talk it through? Well, I think the variable is the other 25 players on the team and the other. They could know, get better through whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's the hope that guys are getting better, you know, year over year, right? Like, you know, Justin Steele was X two years ago and he was Y last year, right? And, like, we're hoping he's Z this year. And, yeah, I mean, it's it's very rarely one particular player that defines a season. It almost never is. It's the combination of players. And to the extent all of those guys improve, like, that is going to be, I think, what ultimately decides the fate of this team. Who is a candidate? to take a leap then who is already in house really good question i think you, you look at some of the guys that didn't play a ton last year a guy like miguel amaya right like in the, at the catcher position showed a lot of flashes of somebody that could really impact our team you know pete got a, a call up you know into the year last year you know we're hoping that he's you know able to take a step forward offensively you know on the pitching side you see guys like wesneski that you know, could be in a rotation at, at some point that you know we feel like have a lot of upside a lot of opportunity to, to help our team out so I'm sure I'm missing a lot, but, you know, nobody was thinking that Azalea was going to be a closer last year at this time. And, you know, look at what he was able to do. So that's the whole thrust of our offseason, in addition to additions and 
bring back replacements if you if you want to call it you know the best thing that we can do from an acquisition standpoint is improve upon the players that we already have yeah and say a suzuki who found another stride in the second half of the year if you get that guy for a full season that's quite a change 100 percent. yeah so it's 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 the the development at the major league level is you know the kind of untalked about secret sauce mm -hmm. um, and something that we focus a lot on. Do you think Craig can can help with that? Sometimes a manager in helping to translate uh, front office the information. Jameson Tyon just talked about that. Like he he figured out how he wants all the stuff presented to him in the same way. Now that you've got. Craig is a partner. You think it, that'll improve? One hundred, one hundred percent. I mean, I think you know, and Rossi is great, and, and and we love Rossi, and he did a great job with it as well. But yes, I mean, that's a, a huge aspect of the modern major league job. It's not just X's and O's during the season. You know, you think of a farm director, and I like think of metaphors, but you know, a minor league system being a school, and the farm director being the principal of the school. Yeah. The major league manager is is essentially the principal of the major league clubhouse, the CEO of the major league clubhouse, and so if our coaches are teachers teaching our players. Like, by definition, if we have a really good principle, we're going to be better at improving over the course of the year. And that mindset and bringing that mindset each and every day is going to help us a ton. You know, we just had Craig here about an hour ago. He's he's uh, really smart. I'm not sure if you're, you're aware of that. But, yeah, no, that, that dude is smart. But I keep thinking about the way that Jed talked about him on the day that you guys announced him, which was that like A.J. Hinch or like Breslow, like a couple of former players who could do really anything. You know, a front office or or a manager and how the, he was kind of looking forward to his input in every aspect of, of the operation. Um, is that welcome by every aspect of the operation? It better be. I mean, look, if you're if you're somebody that sees someone and says that guy can help me, but I don't want him to help me like you don't have a place here. <laughs> like, no, like, no, that's not who we are. Like, yeah. of course, if someone can help us get better, like, yeah, we're, we're digging into that. That's awesome. So yeah. can you get a team give, of rivals, right? Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Can, can you give us an anecdote, a behind the scenes thing that doesn't give away anything proprietary of like how Craig Council has challenged Carter Hawkins? Yeah, uh, like day one, we showed him a, like the way we display some information on players. And he's like, why the hell do we do it that way? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, X, Y, and Z is pointing us in a total different direction than what you're saying in terms of what you want from a philosophical perspective. And I'm like, dang it, you're right. Like, yeah. Do you like, mean like how the numbers were actually put on a piece of paper? What do you, what do you yeah, mean? Yeah, like the display of the information basically emphasize things that really oh. weren't driving our decisions or shouldn't drive our decisions. Oh, interesting. I, I get it. That's a little bit ambiguous, but that was the, like, that was the look. It was, you know, day one. Yeah. Hey, like, we can do this better. Like, yeah, yeah we can. That's the modern gig of the manager. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Is to translate that stuff and understand a player's mindset. And it'll get even better once he understands the particulars of how some specific players learn. Because yeah. everybody learns different. And there's a skill to, to asking questions without questioning. Right. To, to, without saying, hey, you're bad at this. It's saying, hey, I can help you get better at this. And I, I think Craig has a really good way of that. You know, he certainly is is willing to give feedback very quickly and very bluntly. But at the same time, there's this level of care there that, you know, that he's doing it because he wants to help. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's the, the give take that you have to have. He um, he wouldn't cop to his relationship with Josh Hader other than he said it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, we're wondering. Is there more more to be spent on the bullpen, you think, from here to opening day? Yeah, I mean, you think overall, as you look at places we can improve our team, like we can always bring more arms in, um, and bullpen arms are certainly an area that, you know, we'll be looking at, whether that's an area that we transact in, you know, we will see. But, yeah, I mean, that's something that we're, you know, we're definitely talking to different agents and talking to different teams, and, you know, we'll see what comes to fruition here. But, yeah, we had a, a solid bullpen last year, but would love to, to be able to add to that. T tell me if this is fair or not. Um, it, it, you know, it, you, I look at it, and I think the number was somewhere between 35 and $45 million to approach the first level of the luxury tax, right, or the competitive balance tax. So now we got Imanaga at 15, Michael Bush trade, which we should talk about, is fascinating, and there's not a lot of money added there. Seems to be a, a bunch of money left to do more. Is it, is it reasonable to then expect to get towards that threshold? So without getting into payroll conversations, because that's just not advantageous to us in, in our negotiations, I will say the public stuff on competitive balance tax isn't always exactly what the actual competitive balance tax numbers are. There's different charges. There's different aspects of player options and things that play into it. So, um, yes, I think it's directionally right in terms of where we are, but it's, it probably misinterprets a little bit where we actually are but look like we're going to figure out ways to help our team whether it's spending money whether it's it's trades whether it's getting our internal guys better and we work at that 
every single day. It's all we care about. That's all we think about. Um, that's what worries us, not the timing of it, but just how are we going to make this team better um, and future teams better as well. And that's the, the balance Jed and I have every day. And having a partner in Craig with that is awesome and um, with what makes it fun, especially when you got fans like this that are just so into it. It's, it's uh, hard not to get energized. Have you signed a baby yet or anything weird? <laughs> <laughs> So that's the best like thing about my job. Weird things happen here, man. So, like, I'm the number two. Like, I'm the. I got a question about that too in a second. And it's great. Like, people, you know, for the most part, leave Don't. me alone. Yeah. yeah. Well, so <laughs> so when at when Theo was here, he used to joke that like that Jed was the potted plant, and he would do the press conferences, and Jed's talked about it openly that he was going to make you sit up there with him so that you wouldn't get any questions asked to you, and that kind of, that happened at the at the council introductory thing. But Craig took it a step further when he stood up to put on his Cubs jersey, he handed you his suit coat. He's like, here, yeah. hold this. Oh, and, and, yeah, I'm a, and I'm, a, I, I'm a coat hanger as well. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. How, did that, how did that feel to the ego? Oh, it felt really good. Felt really good? Yeah, it's like, I don't care. It's like, I got the I best, would, I I got the best job in America. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's like, it's awesome. I get to, to work in a great front office with great people, get to have influence over really fun decisions, and don't have to sign babies. But that's so funny, though. Like, Jed was the potted plant, and you're the coat hanger. Yeah, that's, that's totally great. Fun. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I would like to think, like, we just needed a better-looking plan, and then I also am yeah. a yeah, 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 <laughs> But, sure. yeah, I mean, like, however you want to call it. However you want to call it. I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell us about Michael Bush. It's really interesting trade. Jackson Ferris is uh, – it might be big time, but it might be 2026 20, or 2027. You guys are trying to win now. So w what do you like about this kid, and at what position should we be looking so I'll, I'll talk about Michael Bush a little bit, and I'll talk about trades. Okay. So Michael Bush, really good fit for our roster, can play multiple positions, can play first, can play second, can play third, is a left-handed bat, has hit throughout the minor leagues, um, just an exceptional bat that's the number one prospect or was the number one prospect in the Dodgers system, and, you know, has a lot of years of control left. So, you know, if he hits for us, he's going to hit for a long time. This is not a one-year rental type of type of player. So really excited to get him, get him on board. With trades, we just don't know, right? Like, we traded away Jackson Ferris. Zaire Hope might be the guy that actually ends up being an all-star. We do not know. There is massive risk either when you give dollars to a player or when you give players away to get another player. And that's just something that we have to accept as part of our jobs. Of course, we're trying to put ourselves with the best odds of having success. But, yeah, those guys have a chance to be really, really good. That's why the Dodgers wanted them. That's why we wanted Bush. They're thinking the same thing. Like, oh, my gosh, he might end up being an all-star. Like, yeah. It was a better fit for us at where we are, and, and those young players are better fit for them with where they are. Um, but risk all around, and that's the name of the game. Baseball trade. Have you talked with Council much? Uh, yeah, here and there. Here and there. Uh, just at Wrigley in passing. Sat down with him a little bit, but um, he's definitely, like, when guys are working out, I feel like he's, like, very respectful of, like, letting them do their thing and stuff. So kind of just nothing's too serious but so it's been how, nice how, how much are you at like how much are guys at wrigley and working out i thought everybody I was like, just in like florida and arizona yeah, and getting the hell yeah out of here. like costa rica or yeah, like, yeah. Or, no Mexico. Um, we've had more people in in wrigley this year than normal i've been here like about a, a week of each month but like jmo and ian and keegan thompson and those guys have been super consistent and it's nice to have a little group there uh working out um so yeah he's been around too craig's been around and, yeah I just I think your guys are gonna vibe very well, like personality type. Like, have you had any baseball conversation with him, or is that all about spring training? Yeah, I feel like kind of he's gone more the route of getting to know people first, which I'm a huge fan of. And um, you know, obviously there's gonna be plenty of, of serious stuff coming our way, but more just here and there, just getting to know each other. You know, it's a sensible approach by him too, because like it's not like you guys hated your manager. Yeah. Right. For sure. I mean, there's there was a lot of love in that room for David Ross yep. and and coming back. So it's got to be it, he seems like a very smart, intuitive guy who's going to be respectful to that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like I feel like the way that things were handled, at least the narratives I saw publicly, were pretty accurate as far as like the internal opinion of, of Rossi was, was still in a strong place. Um, they made a d decision to go another direction and. I'm just glad that Rossi is in a place where he's, you know, still really respected in the game as he should be. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and their interaction seemed like like Craig texted yes, him, exactly, yeah. and then Rossi called yeah, him I, and they talked. That I don't was know really the cool. details of that, but obviously that takes a lot of uh, um, just good integrity to do that. Yeah, yeah that's ser serious maturity. He he is though. I, I agree, Danny. Like you guys, we were talking about different players that are really maybe going to click 
with what that guy brings to the table, and you're one that, yeah, that I hope came so. to mind. I hope so. Hopefully we're doing it for a while. Hey, do you have friends in, in Milwaukee who have played for him at all? Um, not so much. I know uh, – you know, Wade Miley is everyone's friend. Everyone loves Wade Miley. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he, he, said, he said good things and, and stuff like that. But, you know, the world, world travels in our game so fast and, you know, only heard good things. So I'm excited. Cool. Who, who's your crew around the game? Like who, like not on the Cubs, who are your, who are your best My friends in the game? Squad. Yeah. Um, squad goals. Yes. Now, uh, I'll be rooming with Tristan Beck from the Giants. Uh, he was a, a rookie this past year, had a solid, solid first season. I live with him in spring training. Um, and he's out in San Francisco right now, so we spend a good amount of time together. And, um, yeah, I mean, the game gets small pretty qu quick, and I think that's one of the coolest things. Like when pretty much every team you're you're playing against, there's someone on the other side you actually care about, and it's fun watching. And, like, this, it's just fun to follow people all around the game, and I really like that part of it. Yeah, so do we, man. Like, it's cool when you yeah. learn that, that, that people know each other, like each other, whatever. Do you know Michael Bush at all? New, newest Just cup? met him. Just met him. Seems like a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, super exciting. I mean, it seemed like he was in a position where, um, you know, clearly a major league hitter for a while now, but obviously the, the lineup they have in L.A. and just the, the positional situation, just not, not a lot in his power um, as far as getting in the lineup there. So awesome that you know, he's going to be here and have, have an opportunity to help us win games. I'm excited to get to know him and, and see what he's about. Mm -hmm. So you're like, we're talking to Nico Horner. You're a thought out guy. Do you have this off season? I need to get better at this. Like, is it, is it, are you working towards specific goals of improvement or is it just stay in shape and be ready to be healthy for the grind? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I feel like, um, Question. People, oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, 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 ye
the contracts in the past, you're like obviously more than established. Yeah, now. I've mailed it in. No, but that's not. <laughs> I, I, I would think the opposite, maybe. Like some of that stuff of like that would be natural. Of it's a sport of failure. Do I belong here? What's my position yeah. going to be? Am I going to be able to set my family up financially, which is the goal of any professional athlete and any human being? Like that stuff is taken care of, and then you can just kind of be like, go play ball. Yeah. Is, is there anything to? the noise quieting around you and that maybe leading to some of the comfort enjoyment yeah, yeah that's a good question i think there's some two some, Thank some, you. Some, job, <laughs> not <laughs> damn <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll come up with i one. didn't mean that one as much. <laughs> the um i think i think it's like different parts of the off season i've noticed like cycles in my mentality where like you know it's easy to relax in november like i don't have as much commitment and then the holidays i've always gotten like pretty stressed out like because it's a time where I'm, like, really supposed to be doing stuff, but there's also, like, a lot of other stuff going on and kind of have that in-between space, and that's where I can kind of get anxious in that time. And so I think just recognizing that and knowing there's a cycle to it and, like, I've been through it three or four times and, like, it's going to be okay and I've done this before and kind of things like that that show up all the time, whether it's, like, when do I go to Arizona? Like, I want to be ready. Like, there's games four, to four days after we show up for our official dates, so I can't show up then. And, you know, you start kind of spinning yourself in circles and just having a little more peace of mind with that. But... I mean, but on the flips, I mean, talk about accomplishment, like, I haven't won anything. Like, I haven't been a part of winning. So, like, there's kind of a lot to do, you know? So Hell yeah, of, there is. Yeah, so <laughs> kind of feels like a lot of things are just starting in a lot of ways, if that makes sense. Yeah, I does. think, I mean, that's that's a great answer. Yeah. I was asking individually, and you're talking about the team there, but that's the kind of guy you are. Like, you, you did win a gold glove. But, but you mean, you you are most motivated by being on a winning team. yeah it's the coolest thing you can do man it just yeah I, it, I guarantee you if we're having if we have a a winning season you know we win the central we have success we keep going um that there's going to be a, a ton of individual success within that and I, you know I, if i'm healthy i'd like to think i'll be a, a big part of that so yeah so um so i remember when young nico came off the couch in that september after the year you were drafted and you were thin Yes. And then a couple years later in spring, you showed up and whew, you were swole. Mm. You were thick and, and strong. And then there were some soft tissue uh, injuries. Yep. And now I think we'd, we've gotten to the just right portion of the Three Little Bears analogy yep. uh, for Nico. Are you, are, are you feeling that same way about your physicality or is there any temptation to get stronger? Um, yeah, it's good. good. Don't even say it. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that whole thing was so blown out of proportion about my body changing. Like was. I was like seven pounds different, probably. Okay. Yeah, it was just visually then. What I, was it? Well, I changed my uniform size. I got called up. <laughs> That's and I just got, cheating. I just got handed a uniform, and it was a forty-six, and I'm wearing a forty-two now, and I am bigger than now. See. But you know, those things like right. just putting that out so there. So not but, a good question. No, I was I was bigger. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a good place now. I think there's a lot of different ways to weigh what I weigh, and I think I'm getting a better understanding of what that means. Uh -huh. um, That's interesting, performance athlete stuff. Yeah, yeah. I actually did a little little in-body test today and was feeling pretty good about it. So hmm. I was What's an in-body Oh, test? an in-body is a little thing. You stand on a scale, and then you hold these things, uh, and then it tells you your body fat percentage and things like that. So I've been uh -huh. doing that once a month. It's kind of nice. Wow. When it, when it is nice. I have uh, yeah. I, I've not been doing that. <laughs> yeah. You trying to challenge Dansby for best flow? No, that's not a that's not a, a thing I'm going to be taking up. I think he's he's had that crown he's, he's for got a while. Any team yes. that he's on, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got the like the baseball hair that like I feel like high schoolers go to the barber and like can you, can you do that? Like, <laughs> can you give me the baseball <laughs> yeah, hair? Yeah. And I have the Swanson. Yeah. I also feel like he maybe knocks the helmet off when he's running intentionally to he, to he let people see it. He deserves it. <laughs> you think so? He's earned that. Yeah, that, that was Manny Ramirez's move, man. That yeah. helmet, like any opportunity he had to knock that thing off, he did.